Hello everyone and welcome back to another Blender modeling tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over how you can add complex shapes or organic shapes to your mesh which you can use to extrude to achieve the result you want. So I'm going to get straight into it. So you could do this on something like a cube but for this example I'll just use a simple plane. Press shift A, mesh and then select plane. Then I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to come down to image reference and then I'm going to find my image which is just the blender logo. I'll select my image and I'll just press Alt R to clear all the rotation. I'll press R and then Z and I'll press 90 and then I'll press S to scale and I'll just scale it down. I'm going to turn on this x-ray button here so I can see through my mesh. I'm going to zoom in here I'm actually going to press this blue circle here to go right in the top down view and I'm actually going to rotate my image back so I'll select my image and then press R, Z and then minus 90 and then I can maybe scale it up a little bit more that should be fine just now so now what I'm going to use is a special tool called the knife tool so all I need to do is well first of all select my plane and press tab to enter edit mode then I'll press 1 on the keyboard to make sure I'm in vertices select mode. And then I can press K on the keyboard to access the knife tool. I recommend deselecting everything first and then pressing K to access the knife tool. And all I'm going to do is pick a point here on the logo and I'm just going to start drawing around with these vertices. So I try and keep them around the same length but if, you, if it changes a bit then don't worry too much about it. And yeah, and I'm just going to keep going around it and I'll come back when I'm done. Alright, so I just selected this final one to connect them all and now what I'm going to do is select this vertice here and then press G and Y to bring it up a wee bit, it looks a bit nicer. Now I've done that, I'm going to press K again and now I'm going to create a circle around here. So I'm just going to start selecting again. And now with all these vertices selected, I'm just going to press I to inset and roughly get the shape of my other circle. So I can maybe move it up a bit, I can press S and X to scale on the X axis, G and X to move it there, and I'll set over that just now. Now what I'm going to do is press 3 on the keyboard to enter face select. I'm going to select my face here, and I'll turn off the X ray just now because we don't really need it, and I'll shift select this one. Now what I'm going to do is come out from my orthographic view just by spinning this little circle here, and I'm just going to press E, bring it out. It'll automatically go across the local z-axis there. And I'm just going to move around and see if there's any errors that I've encountered here. But everything seems to be looking pretty good there. Now what I'm going to do is press I, to inset. I'm going to try and do it so there's no overlap by Ctrl Z and do that again and then press I. You notice there's this glitching there so I need to make sure there's no glitching ideally otherwise I have to go in and fix it manually. So scroll around just to make sure everything's working fine. Looks good to me. Now I'm going to select my face here and I'm going to press E just to bring it up just to give it a little bit more depth. I'll press this, this green circle here and then I'll just press G and then Z and kind of even up. But there should be fine. And I'll press I there as well. Excellent. Now the first thing we need to do is fix up this topology because what we're going to do next is add a subdivision surface and Blender isn't going to be able to calculate how to subdivide this because there's so many edges on one face. So we need to turn this face into quads. If I press 1 on the keyboard to enter vertice select mode, a quad is essentially a face with four edges. So I'm noticing here there is a little bit too many vertices here but we can still work with that. We'll just uh, select this one here and then control left click this one here. So it picks the shortest path here. Now I'll press F and now you can see I've got a square. I've got a distorted square. So just any shape with four sides. And now I'm going to press Control R, left click there to even this up. And then with this one selected, I'll now Control click here and press F again. And now I'm going to do the same thing here. I've got another error here, so I'll just press Control R to create that. And I'll select this vertice GG to move it across this edge. Then I'll select this vertice and then press Ctrl left click there again and press F. I'm going to do the same thing here. Over here it's looking good so far so I can just Ctrl left click F. Here I'm going to press Ctrl R to create another loop cut and I'll select this vertice and GG to even it up. Then with that vertice selected Ctrl left click F, Ctrl left click. And so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and speed the video up and go through the same process so you can just kind of keep an eye on what I'm doing if you're still confused.
All right, so now we've done those three bits on the Blender logo. So you notice here there's an edge going through there and to fix that, I'm just going to press two on the keyboard to enter edge select, select this edge and I'm just going to press X edges. And you'll notice that that's deleted quite a lot, but don't worry, we're going to fill this all in. I'm going to do the same here, select that edge, X edges. And now I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. You can uh, turn off this logo image if you like. So just press that I button there and turn it off a render view as well. But I'm going to delete it later anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to select this edge here in edge select mode. I don't know if you can see that too well, but it's highlighted in white. Then I'm going to shift select this one here, and then just press F. And I'm just going to do the control left click process again. I'm going to switch the vertice select mode so you can see it easier. I'll just press F and I'll keep going. Again, I've encountered another issue, so all I'm going to do is press Control R and create a loop cut there, and I will Control left click again, and I'll just keep going. So another issue here, I'm going to Alt left click this, just like the loop. I'll press GG, and I'm going to move it along. Then in here, I'm going to press Control R to create another loop cut here. I'll press G and X to kind of move it out a little bit to keep the circular going. And I'll select this vertice, control left click that one, press F. Another issue here, I'm going to do the same thing. Alt left click on that edge loop, GG, move it along, control R, G and then X to make it more circular. I'm going to alt left click this one, G and X, get a little more circular. Select this vertice, control click that one, press F, and I'll keep going. This time I'm just going to move this one, so I'll just press GG. Move it down a little bit. I'm going to do the same here as well. Select that one with Alt left click and then GG. Now I'm going to Control left click here and just keep going. I'm going to need to create another loop cut here, so I'll just press Control R on this one. Press GG to move it along, and I'll select this vertice here. GG. Move it individually just to even it up, and then I'm going to Shift select that vertice there, and then hold Shift and then left click these two as well, and then press F. Now you'll notice we do have a bit of an issue here. A triangle seems fairly unavoidable, but there is a way we can fix this. First of all, we can left click this one here, and we can press X and select faces. Then I can press Control R, create another loop cut here. Press one on the keyboard to go back into vertice select mode if you haven't already, and then I'll just press GG and kind of move it along. So this will be a quite an awkward quad, but it's more, it's better than having that triangle there. So I'll just press F and then I'll do the same here and I'll keep going. For this one, I'm just gonna create a quad out of this and I will create another loop cut here. Control R, move it along. It's like the individual vertice and move that along too. Now we do have another issue here. We can go for just a triangle and a square in this exception, but you should always try to go for quads where you can. But for this example, I'll just leave it. So now we've turned all this into a much more calculatable thing for Blender. So now all that's left to do is fix this circle in the middle here, because this also has a lot of edges. So we want to face select mode, select this, press X and faces. Then I'm going to press two and keyboard to enter edge select mode. Hold down Alt and left click this, and that's going to select the edge. And the first thing we need to check is how many edges there are here, like on this circle. So I'll need to count them. So I'll start from up here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 2. So that's an even number, which is good. So I'm going to hold down Alt, left click. Now we can right click loop tools and choose circle it looks a little bit strange at first but we can scale it in a bit and press r and z to rotate it to try and get it so it's fairly even press s and x to kind of move it out a bit g and then y move it up then i'll select face and then grid fill now our blender should have a, a much easier time figuring that out all right here we go here's our logo so far it's obviously not got any color but it's looking a lot nicer so now we're going to need to add a subdivision surface modifier so this thing looks a lot smoother. So I'll come over to my modifier here and I'll left click subdivision surface. And already you can see a dramatic difference. Also if you haven't been saving make sure you're saving frequently. Although this should go without saying really but I know I'm quite bad for this personally. So make sure you save. Now I'll press tab and enter edit mode. And now I'm going to, need to fix up everything here. So I'm going to press alt left click and then shift left click here on these outside planes. And I'll turn my mean crease value under item and transform to one. 
I'll do the same for these two edges here. Mean increase, one. There, now that's looking a lot better. Now we essentially need to select all these bottom ones, and the only ones we don't need to select are these up and down edges here. So press Alt left click to start, and that should select a bunch of them. Then I can press Shift Alt left click here, and that's doing a really good job at selecting pretty much everything there. Now I can create a mean increase of one. There we are, that's looking a lot nicer. Turn on X-ray to make sure everything's selected, and yeah, that looks good. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the top edges. So I'll press Shift and then Alt, and that selected everything, which is very good. Then all I need to do is go over to mean increase and type in the number of one. And now you can see how it's looking. Now here on the outside, I'm gonna press Alt and then left click, and then I'll Increase my mean increase to 1 again. Turn on my x-ray and I'm going to press alt left click here too. Mean increase to 1. Control S to save. It's good to save frequently for this. Alt left click here. Mean increase to 1. You can make it a little bit less than mean increase if you want to have a more smooth transition. But I'm just doing 1 to, for my 1. Now I'll just press 1 again. Now I'll press tab back into object mode. Turn off the x-ray. And now we're making some serious progress. So now I'm going to right click and shade smooth. And at first it's going to look absolutely horrific. I'll just come down and turn on auto smooth and that's fixed that right up. Press tab into edit mode. I'm going to go one to vertice select. Then I'm going to turn off this button called show overlays and I'm going to try and fix this issue here. So I'm going to press G and M, Y, G and X, G and Y. That's more or less fix that up for now. It is a little, little jagged, but you can have a play around if you have any issues like that. I'm also going to increase my auto smooth to around 50 degrees. I'll go with 55. And now it's looking a lot smoother on some of those jagged edges there. I'll turn my overlays on again. And now I'm going to enter x-ray. And then I'm going to quickly add some materials to this to kind of show you. I've made the video on this before. So I'm just going to create a material and I'm going to just keep it this basic white. And then I'll create another one. Choose my material, duplicate it. And I'll create a dark blue color. Create a new material, choose my other one. Press this button here to duplicate it. And I'll select a more orange color here. And I'm going to go ahead and select the vertices and assign the materials accordingly. And there we have it guys, that's our logo finished. It can be a little bit laggy when you're working off a plane like this, but it's a method that works nonetheless. So just consider how much subdivisions you're using. I think try keep it as low as possible with your subdivision surface modifier. But yeah, hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I make more videos. Thank you very much again and I'll see you all in the next video.